Hi everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. As a follow-up from the last video on how to install ASE V on VMware EXXI, I'm going to show you in this video how to configure the enable password, the management IP address, as well as how do you set up um, the HTTP server on the ASAV to allow management of the ASAV through the ASDN uh, Java client. Okay, so to start, once you boot up the router or the sorry the ASAV in this case, right? Um, a fresh install. There will be no password configured. So the first thing that you want to do is to go into configuration mode by entering the command enable. Right, so you can see there's no password set, so you need to set a strong password to start configuration. Okay, so that's the very first step. And do take note, if you're familiar with the iOS and the ASAV command line, you'll realize that uh, by the By default, the configuration that you're doing is in running config, and then you need to save it to startup config to make it persistent, right? You can issue the command, write memory, or copy running config to startup config. So you need to do that. If not, when you reboot the ASAV, you will lose the configuration. So it's a very important part that uh, do not forget. Okay, so once that is done, uh, the next step what we do is go into global config mode by issuing config terminal okay first time that you are using the device you will prompt you whether you want to you know uh, imp help to improve by reporting errors you can do yes for in my case right so once we are in the global config mode you can do a quick check right this is what I like to do uh, issuing the command show interface IP brief, we'll see what are the IP address assigned to the interface. Uh, it gives me a summary view of what are the interfaces that are available in the ASAV and uh, what are the IP address assigned, right? It's a quick way to identify what are the ports that you have and, uh, you know, to validate some of the IP address configuration. So you can see here, um, the management LAN or port right now, does not have IP address assigned and the status of the port is administratively down, right? So this is where we need to do a quick configuration uh, to assign the IP address so that we can manage the ASAV remotely. Now, uh, you can ignore the internal data uh, interface uh, for all the virtual appliance uh, in the ASAV uh, or the ASAV, uh, you have internal data interface that you probably uh, won't be able to configure or you shouldn't be configuring anything even if you could because it's used for internal uh, ASA virtual appliance communication, okay? So now, very quickly, uh, we're going to go into the interface by issuing the command interface management uh, 0 slash 0 as you can see. Right, and then uh, give it a name, right? Um, with the new object based uh, management, it's always good to have a name assigned, right? So that you can recognize and understand what is the respective port for. So we're going to name it management, right? Quite simply. Now, uh, there are different security levels set for different ports, uh, as you can see. Uh, you will use this when we are configuring uh, the outside and inside interface as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, zero being the least security and 100 uh, least secure and 100 being the most secure uh, level. So for management VLAN recommended, uh, the recommendation is to give it a uh, high security level. So we're going to give it a security level 100. You can read into the details on what the security level are about if you're interested. Okay, but uh, for this tutorial, we're going to set it to 100, right? Maximum security level. Next, what we're going to do is to give it an IP address. Okay, I've uh, created two subnet for this tutorial. One is uh, 198.1.33.0 uh, subnet. Give it an IP address. 
for the ASAV management interface, we're going to set it to dot two two zero subnet two five five two five five dot two five five dot zero, which is slash twenty four, right? Okay. So once that is done, um, if you remember previously in the uh, status is administrative down, so we need to do a no shut or no shut down to bring up the interface. Okay. Once we do that, we can show a the show interface IP brief again. And now you can see that we have configured the management interface with the IP address and we have brought up the interface, right? So it's, you can see the status is now up. So that's pretty much the steps to configure IP address for management LAN or management port. You can pretty much do the same for the rest of the port. Okay, now what we are do is to enable the HTTP server on the ASAV so that we can uh, manage it through the ASDM client. So HTTP server enable is a command. Okay, now that we have enabled the HTTP server, we then need to set the IP address that is allowed uh, to manage the ASV through, right? So you can do a question mark right to see what exactly is uh you know the command right so you can set a host right to allow only a specific host to access the uh, http server or the whole subnet so in, uh, in my case i'm going to use the whole subnet and then you can see that uh available through which interface. So right now I've only enabled a uh, management interface. So, you know, we're going to specify the management interface. Okay. So those are the couple of quick steps that you need to do, right? To configure the uh, ASAV to start using and managing the ASAV. Okay. So now that we're done with the command line or the terminal configuration, let's hop over to the um, workstation that I've installed for this tutorial. Okay, so you can see we have uh, a Windows 10 client. Now what we want to do is go to command prompt. Take, let's take a look at the IP address. It's 33.30, which is in the same subnet. And then let's do a ping. And we can see that we are now able to ping the uh, ASA appliance, right? So the next step we're going to do is to open a browser. This is where we're going to retrieve or download the ASDN client, right? So we need to key in the IP address of the ASAV. Okay, do take note you need to specify HTTPS because uh, they allow only HTTPS connection, which is good. That means that it's encrypted. You'll see the warning for certificate. You can ignore that uh, safely for lab testing because we've not done any configuration to trust the certificate yet. Okay. Uh, once you access the firewall the, or the ASAV, uh, you give you a couple of instruction. You will need a Java Web Start application to use ASDM. Uh, there, there are reasons why, you know, moving into the new FTD, uh, this is no longer the case, right? Because Java can be tend to be a little bit uh, riskier, right? When it comes to vulnerability, right? But uh, we're going to install Java Web Start so can we can start using the ASDM launcher. So it'll bring you to the Java web page. Click on download Java. You'll download the... Java for our Windows application. Launch the file, install Java. Okay, you can see that it's successfully installed. Okay, you can click back to get back to the uh, firewall. Now we need to install the ASDM client, right? Okay, by default, we have not set up triple a authentication or any username and password so for this case you need to do the uh just key in the password that you have set in the early part of the tutorial right uh after you key in the password you will download a dm launcher open the file 
right? Install the application it's very fast. Install, right? Finish. And that's what we need to do to install the ASDM client. Okay, you can see that a shortcut has been created. Double click on this. Okay, so for the newer Windows 10 client, right? Uh, do take note, you might run into this error for a uh, newer Windows machine. Not to worry. Uh, it is basically the target path that you need to change, right? So if you go to properties, uh, you can see that the path is actually, uh, you know, different from the usual configuration that you see. I believe this is, you know, a way to provide compatibility, right, uh, in Windows 10. Uh, but, you know, uh, not too sure why it's not working, it should get fixed. Uh, but every, having said that, don't have to worry too much about it. You just need to change the target to the following, All right? Uh, Right, you just need to change that whole bulk of uh, you know long gibberish uh, letters into System Thirty Two, right? And that's all you need to do. Click on Apply, right? And now if I launch the ASDM, I would not uh, have the same error, right? So now what we need to do is specify the firewall IP address and then key in the password. Okay, now before we do that, uh, one thing that we want to do, just to avoid any uh, confusion, right? We have not saved the config, right? So let's go ahead and do a write mem, right? So now we have saved the configuration, right? Okay, and then if we go back here and we click OK, uh, do not worry about the certificate. Uh, for lab environment. Okay, you can see that now we are con uh, connected to the ASAV through the graphical user interface, right? Uh, there's no active ASAV platform license, it's fine. Uh, I have yet to install the license, so you get this uh, warning. Don't have to worry about it because uh, you know you get all the features uh, except for uh, the traffic is being rate limited to 100 kbps and a maximum of 100 connection for this uh, environment right so not to worry um, it does prompt you to and uh, set the enable password on the a uh, the asdm right uh, even though we have set the password on the asav uh, i believe is um i haven't figured out what uh, is the cause of that yet but uh you know once you go into the triple a configuration then you know uh you don't have to worry too much about this, right? But do take note, uh, as you can see, I have done the installation for another ASAV previously. So you can see I have that here as well. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, uh, go to the configuration, okay? Uh, and then we can look at the device setup, right? So if I go into the interface, you can see that, uh, the configuration is now being populated uh, into the ASDM. And that's all for today's tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one where I will show you how to configure the inside and outside interface of the ASAV so that you can allow the inside users using the NAND function through the firewall to access the internet. Thank you.